Hi, production people. I'm cinematographer Jim Ross with Cinematics HD in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I'm once again doing something new that I hope will help you on set. With the help of my young aspiring cinematographer daughter, Misako. Say hi, Misako. Hi. I thought I'd put together a video comparing a new technology to a tried and trusted old one. Now, I've been in this business for 20 years, so for most of my career, my kit has predominantly been tungsten lamps, like this RE1K, or fluorescent fixtures like Kinoflow. When the first LED panels came out a few years ago, I tried them and hated them. They either spiked green or magenta, and the skin tones were just awful. Plus, they were so underpowered. But after Aerie came out with the sky panel and then Aperture put the industry on its head with their lights, Everything changed. Suddenly LED lights are getting great color CRI scores and their output continues to grow. So last week I decided to try out one of the more powerful yet budget-minded fixtures on the market. It's the Generay Endeavor, a 150 watt chip on board LED monolight. Now it's bright, it's daylight balanced, it's inexpensive, and it has a CRI of 97 and costs less than 300 bucks on B&H. Now, after using it as a side fill on a national commercial for a big lawnmower manufacturer, I decided I wanted to try a comparison to one of my trusty 1K RE fixtures. So I've set up both lights side by side in the driveway. And once the sun goes down, I'm going to compare the two in their output in a very unscientific comparison by shining them on the garage door. Now, I'll be using my light meter to check the output of each of these lights and I'll be testing them at distances of 10 feet, 15, 20, and 25 foot intervals. Now, this RE is tungsten and has a color temperature of 3200 Kelvin. The Generay is daylight balanced or 5500 Kelvin. So I will also be leveling the playing field by using CTB to bring the RE up to daylight and then using CTO to bring the Generay down to tungsten because if I'm going to be using these lights in a mixture of lamps, I'll need to match them on location. So to only measure their native output is not going to show me what they're going to live up to on location shoots when matching the color temperatures. Now, something to note though is that this is only a test of their output. There are so many other considerations to keep in mind when purchasing a lamp. For example, the Airy will pretty much last a lifetime if you take care of it. Mine, in fact, is nearly 30 years old, but looks pretty damn new. I doubt the Generay will last anywhere near as long. Now, the 1K tungsten makes no noise at all. The Generay has a fan. But I can power the Generay with batteries. The 1K needs 110 volt house power. The 1K gets scorching hot, while the Generay stays nice and cool. But most filmmakers agree that tungsten lights give you the best skin tones hands down. Also, if you are using tungsten lamps, they will all match in color temperature, no matter what the manufacturer is. Not so with LEDs. LED color temps can vary by manufacturer and even model types. So you've got much more to consider than just output. So let's wait for the sun to go down and we'll get started. All right, so Misako is going to take our Lux. So go ahead and click. What does it say? 300. 300. Do it a second time just to make sure. 300. It's 300 Lux. Okay, now I'm going to walk the light in from 25 feet to 20 feet. All right, so we're at 20 feet. Click again, sweetie. 450. 450. Click a second time. Still 450, we are at 20 feet, walking it in to 15 feet. And go ahead, click 800 it. 800 feet. 800 feet? Why not 800 feet? <laughs> <laughs> shit! <laughs> was that a shift or a shit? shit. Shift. shift. Misiko always says shoot or shift. All right, now we're coming into 10 feet. Click it. 1,000, what? 1,800 lux. And I would not do this in real life, but we're gonna to go to five feet. And five feet is 
5,500 lux. All right. Okay. Let's pull this back. Okay, now we are on the Airy 1000, the 1K. Now, unlike the Generay, the Airy is focusable, so we can have it at full flood. Make sure to not stare in the Airy. <laughs> Be sure to not stare into the area. Okay, we are at full flood, Misako. Stand to the side. What we got? 200. 200 lux. Okay, we're going to go to full spot. 800. 800. And then we're going to go to 20 feet. And all we've done is change the white balance on the camera. Okay. What does it read? 300. 300. Try a second time. I did. All right. Gonna go to full spot. 1,200. 1, All right, we're going up to 15 feet. It's just kind of bright. Kind of we are at full flood. 560. 560. Full spot. 180. 1,080. All right, well, we're going to come up to 10 feet now. <clears throat> 10 feet, and we are on 1,200 1, on, okay, and on full. 4,200. 4,200. And 5, we're going to go to 5 feet, even though I would never put a, a 1K within 5 and feet five of somebody. Feet. And we're going to go to full flood. Point it directly at the light, honey. Okay. It's kind of angled. There you go. Right there. 4,000. Four okay. Full spot. What? Try again. 17,000. Yep. There's three narrows. Yeah, 17,000. Oh. Much higher ratios coming from the 1K than from the. Uh, from a generator, but only at spot, at full spot. Okay, now we're going to gel this light to make it daylight and see how that affects the output. Bye. Okay, so I just changed the settings on this camera to go to 5600 Kelvin again it's so because cool. I have put a full CTB on the 1K. And you can see already, even Misiko said that the light looks a lot dimmer, and it does. When you put a full CTB on a light, you diminish the intensity of the light a lot. Well, let's find out how much is a lot. Let's go to your mark there, Misiko. Okay. All right, and now give me a Lux. 70? 70. Seven zero, that's it? All right. You did it a second time? I did four times. Four times, 70 each time. All right, let me. All right, now I'm going to do full spot. What you got? 260 lux. 260. I'm going to move the light a little, take another one. 240. 240, 260, depending upon where I've got the mirror. Now we're going to move it up to 20 feet. And I've got these marked on the sidewalk. I'm not just making these up. I'm not estimating or guesstimating. All right, we're at full flood at 20 feet on a 1K. 110. 110 lux? Mm -hmm. Do it a second time for me. I did. 110. All righty. Now we're going to spot it in. I'm going to find the hottest spot. There we go. 400 lux. 400, okay. All righty. Coming up to 15 feet. And we are going to full flood. What we got? 200. 200 lux. Try again. I did. 200. It was 180 first, but I couldn't get the end of 200. Now try. Still 200. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. Now we're going to go to full spot. 
740 at full spot. And the, okay, now. We're going to 10 feet. And this is about as close as you'd ever want to put a 1K to somebody. And what do we got? Four hundred and twenty. All right. Now we're going to go to full spot. One hundred and sixty. That can't be right. Wait, 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 wait! I read it wrong. Zero comes in. One thousand six hundred. One thousand six hundred. Okay. And okay. And finally, at five feet, which I can't ever think of ever putting a one K within five feet, unless it was not a human full fly. 1,300. 1,300. Right, full spot. 4,800. 4,800. Oh, now we have the Genere with full CTO to color correct it to tungsten. And I have changed the white balance on the camera to reflect tungsten, to, to reflect the change in the tungsten. So, Misica. What is our lux at 25 feet? 130. 130, okay. We're coming up to 20. All right, 20 feet. What's our reading? 200 lux. 200 lux. Check it again, please, just to be sure. 200. All right. And now we're coming up to 15 feet. All right. Go ahead and check it out. Point the ball directly at the light. 340. All right, one more time. 340. 340 twice. Okay, now we're at 10 feet. 600. 600. 640. 640. So it's 640 twice, 600 once. Sure, just check it twice. That's right. Try one more time just to be sure. <laughs> Well, I see. I moved. See, I moved the light just a little bit, so that can sometimes affect it. Eight hundred. What? Eight hundred. <laughs> All right. Make sure it's center. You just moved it. No, oh, I think I might have bumped the dimmer. Yeah. All right. Like click it again. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. And at five feet, which I would never do in real life. Two thousand six hundred. And. Wait a minute, point it at the lamp. You have to angle the light meter. It's an angle, it's point. Look, look at the lamp. Lamp's here. Angle it, to, there you go. 3,200. 3,205 feet. Okay. Okay, now what did we learn? Is the generator just as powerful as a 1K Fresnel? Well, the answer is yes and no because it depends. Yes, it is as powerful as a 1K in flood, but not if the 1K is in spot. Then the 1K is much brighter. However, if you need to color correct the light, we get different answers. Now, the basic rule of thumb is when you fully color correct the tungsten to daylight or daylight to tungsten, you cut the light's output in half. And as we saw with my light meter, it was more than half. A 1K essentially becomes a 500 watt or less. So even at full spot, the 1K isn't as powerful as the Generae once you use full CTB to bring it up to daylight. Now on the other side, the Generae with full CTO to make it tungsten is only slightly weaker than the flood of the 1K, but falls short on the spot once again. Now a better comparison would have been to compare the Generae with a 1K par, like a mole par, but I no longer have those in my inventory. Nobody wants them. So which light do I prefer? Well, as many things, it depends. Personally, I would select these lights based on the color temperature of the other sources on the location. Like many things in filmmaking arsenal, these lights are tools for different circumstances. I'm certainly going to choose the 1K in locations that already have tungsten light in place, perhaps an older home with chandeliers or a theater or auditorium still using older theater lighting. That way, the color matches the surrounding lights. But I recently filmed in an auditorium that had replaced all its lights with LEDs that were daylight balanced. So I would choose the Generae there. You certainly are not going to have much use at all with a 1K shooting outdoors to supplement daylight. 
it's basically a 500 watt fixture once you correct it to daylight. Now, to be completely honest, I am beginning to supplement my kit more and more with daylight LED fixtures, and I find that I'm leaving my older fixtures on the truck more and more. Now, why is this? Well, first, it's what clients and prospects want. I've been turned down for gigs that requested LEDs specifically. Now, why do they request them? Well, that brings me to a few more of my other reasons for moving the LEDs. Heat and power. As I said earlier, the tungsten lights get scorching hot. You can literally set fire to things with traditional tungsten lights. All that heat means a set can get hot, and if you have limits to your AC, that can make actors pour sweat. Not a good look. Also, they take more power to run. A 1K draws 1,000 watts, and that's a lot. The Generae is 150 watts. That means I can run six Generae lights for less power than a single 1K. You can only run two 1Ks on a 20 amp household circuit without blowing a breaker. But you can run 16 Generae's on that circuit. 16 compared to two. Now, you don't even need a household circuit with many of these because you can run them off battery power. Lastly, and this is the big one, Digital cameras are more sensitive than ever. You just don't need as much light as before. I shot a dramatic scene with a single bare bulb hanging from the ceiling as the source and used two smaller fixtures to supplement. I filmed night scenes by reflecting street lights, adding a tiny little LED on the dash. I filmed a comedy horror where there were three little low pros and an omni light in a blacked out basement. I simply could not have filmed any of these scenes with regular film cameras 20 years ago. Now, I know I'm going to catch hell from some commenters below that LEDs suck for skin tones and tungsten is the best for this and best for that and real filmmakers don't use Chinese LEDs and that the Generae is hardly a pro tool as my title suggests. Police. I agree, but spare me. The rest of the world is moving to LED whether we like it or not. Your client no longer cares if they see brands like KinoFlow or Ari on your set and could care less if it says Aperture or Generae or even GVM. They care if the lights are cool and efficient. When I crewed on Godzilla, 90% of the fixtures on the soundstage were LED. And gaffer Dan Cornwell told me he absolutely loved them, adding that the amount of control you have and the flexibility can't be beat. And if they're good enough for Dan Cornwall, they're good enough for me. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Cinema Pro Tools Tips. And thanks to my daughter for filming me. I'm Jim Ross with Cinematics HD. And now that COVID seems to be exiting the soundstage, I'll see you on set. Bye. See you later.